Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. It's a busy Friday in the Alamo City, and this noon, we're getting you ready for the weekend. We have a lot going on. Now, here's what you need to know. There will be road closures. RJ has that for us in a few minutes, and there's plenty of fun around town. What events you can expect this weekend, but of course, the weather is also a big topic of conversation. That's right. We are keeping an eye on the Weather Authority radar, as you see right here. A lot of green stuff on the screen right here, so let's not waste any time. We're going to go to live cam and go to Mia Montgomery, who is checking out our rain chances. And Mia, we've been enjoying we really some have. rain throughout the week. How's it going to look going into the weekend? Biggest thing you need to know this weekend, it's not going to be for everybody, so don't cancel any of your plans. However, keep the umbrella at least in the car should you need to use it and know that you may need to dodge a few spots downpours here and there before high pressure takes over in a summertime weather pattern returns into next week. Let's take a look at authority radar right now for those mainly along and west of the highway 281 corridor. We're pretty dry. That includes the hill country. That includes us here in San Antonio. Not a whole lot going on as we just saw out there on live camp, but it is a different story across the coastal plains south of I 10 near Floresville near Stockdale near Gonzales just passed through Hallettsville. We have a broad broken line of some downpours and a couple of isolated storms that have developed and continue to inch their way up farther up to the north. So we're going to be keeping eyes on that about a 40% potential to find a few more spotty downpours in the works this afternoon through about sunset. Still better chances along and east of the I-35 corridor for those that don't tap into the rain. Still going to be a warm one, but slightly cooler than average with high temperatures in the upper 80s near 90 degrees. This weekend, there are those hit or miss rain chances high still contained to the upper 80s here in town. But I did mention earlier that our weather pattern will change into early next week. High pressure takes back over, which means rain chances will come down by Monday and temperatures climb back into the 90s. So enjoy these rain chances while they are here. We're going to get you a full look at that weekend forecast and your future cast a little bit later on. All right, thank you, man. Now to those road closures that we mentioned off the top of our show here. And yes, drivers on the northwest side, you kind of already know the drill out here, but you know what? All things considered, this weekend's closure is not going to be too bad. So you see this big red mark right here? Yes, close. Basically, 1604 westbound from Lock Hill Selma all the way to the I 10 1604 interchange. That will be closed starting tonight at 9 o'clock through 5 a.m. But here's the good news 1604 eastbound for all of our drivers coming in from the UTSA area going out there to Lock Hill Selma and Northwest Military that will stay open. We also have I-10 East open in both directions as well. So again, it's not as bad as we've seen over the past couple of weekends or so. They are setting those beams as they continue all of that flyover work over there. The 1604 North expansion again, just be safe. And if there are any updates due to maybe some weather changes, we will let you know on KSAT.com and also make sure to check out TxDOT's social media platforms as well. Tiffany. Very good news. I'm loving all that green. Now, mm -hmm. City Council has been talking about a proposal to phase out the use of horse-drawn carriages downtown, and now the city wants to hear from you. The city wants your thoughts on the future of horse-drawn carriages downtown. They have a survey online. You can find it at sapeakup.com slash horse. The survey will be open through Tuesday, August 13th, 2024. And within the last year, several favorite San Antonio restaurants have closed their doors for numerous reasons. Take a look at this list right here. Acadiana Cafe, The Rustic, Augie's Barbecue, and Jim's Restaurants on San Pedro and Broadway are just some of the places that have closed within the past 12 months. We wanted to fi find out why. So we asked the Texas Restaurant Association what is contributing to these closures. So pretty much every good or service that a restaurant needs to purchase in order to deliver that great experience to a customer costs significantly more these days. And so for a while, we saw menu prices increase to really offset those additional costs. Um, but we're at a point now where consumers really can't afford to pay anymore, right? They're feeling the pinch, whether it's at the grocery store, at the gas pump, with their rent, with their utilities. And so restaurants are having to make really difficult choices. Digital journalist Ivan Herrera breaks down the data and paints a clearer picture of the Texas restaurant economy. Find that story right now on KSAT.com. Just scan the QR code 
at the bottom of your screen. All right, we all know we got some good food here in South Texas, y'all in San Antonio, and check this out. There's going to be a Texas edition of the Michelin Guide. It will be released later this year, and it will include Austin, Dallas, Fort Worth, Houston, and the Alamo City. Restaurants can request to be considered in the Michelin Guide. People can also recommend restaurants. You just have to submit a form on the Michelin website. We've already heard from several viewers about which local spots they'd like to see included in the guide. Join the conversation right now. All you got to do is scan the QR code that you see on your screen. So what happens after a restaurant gets suge suggestions to come in? All right, that is when Michelin goes to work here. They take their inspectors take on the tough job, the tough job. Yes, trying out food <laughs> of trying those places out. They eat at those restaurants multiple times during different seasons, days of the weeks and those times. As you see, the team then discusses their experiences all to get a complete picture and make sure that the cooking is consistent. Again, they're going to talk over their experience together and then they make a final determination on how to rate that restaurant. The inspectors don't look at how the restaurant is decorated or even the service of quality. It's strictly all about the food. And San Antonio is a foodies paradise, but that's not the only thing to do in our city. There's always a lot going on. Just take a look. There's a resource fair happening tomorrow. The city of San Antonio's Department of Human Services and Cafe College join forces to host a free level up resource fair for recent high school graduates preparing for college or employment. The fair will help people ages 16 to 24 who need help, not just high school graduates. And there's free fishing. Fin Addicts will host a free youth fishing clinic and tournament at the Green Line on Sydney Brooks. Registration starts at 8 tomorrow morning. And the San Antonio Botanical Garden will have free admission for all visitors tomorrow. In addition, the garden is hosting dog days during July and August, where visitors can bring their dogs to enjoy time in nature for free from 8 a.m. to noon. And Peso Pluma is in the Alamo City. The Grammy Awards winner will be performing and taking his arena tour at the Frostbank Center tomorrow. And if you're going to the big show, post your pictures. We want to see them and all the videos on KSAT Connect. And you can find more about these events on KSAT.com. Just go to the things to do section of our website. And I'm very jealous Ooh, because yes. I had no idea he was coming to San Antonio. John Bernthal, I'm a big fan, <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> I like a lot of the movies that he's in and the shows as well. All right, how about moving on to the kiddos in San Antonio? They're trying to make the most out of these last few days of their summer break. Cannot believe that. And check this out. They got some archery and kayaking going on. Children got the chance to have some outdoor fun, but they also had the chance to learn about nature. It's part of the Parks and Rec Department's inaugural program called Aim to Float. There's three components of the program. Uh, it is archery, it is kayaking, and there is a natural areas component or uh, think about conservation. One of the um, activities as the kids exit, they will then be able to go to uh, and look at a watershed model and see um, how pollutants enter our waterways, as well as they'll be doing sampling of invertebrates, and then they're gonna be able to um, look at them up close and learn about that as well. This is the first year for the program. The city plans to do it again next summer. All right, this is a really cool story. We saw these baby goats. They were so cute. <laughs> the AgriScience Magnet Program at Madison High School is giving students a chance to dive into the world of animal care by raising goats and other animals. I visit the school to learn more about how this program is transforming students into skilled agricultural experts. High school students have been spending a lot of time here this summer raising their animals and we have some of the students here and the FFA advisor Cherie. Good morning to all of you. Um, we'll start with you Bailey. You've been raising animals for many years. What is your favorite part? Um, probably just getting to know my animal because they just bring so much positivity and happiness and I love waking up early and coming here at night just to see them and see their shenanigans. <laughs> well, tell us about Grace. Um, I got Grace about a month and a half ago and then I have another um, goat and he's a weather, so a boy. His name's Diesel and I named them after mine and my brother's middle name. So. What advice would you have for other students that are thinking about doing this? Um, probably just to you know, have a bond with them because once you get to know them and get to know how they act and all that stuff, then it's so easy to kind of know what they're going to do in the arena so you can know how to fix it easier. 
And Reed, this is your first year doing this. What has been your favorite part so far? My favorite part has just been coming up and being able to spend time with Tina and yeah, learning all, all of the responsibility and challenges that have come with it. And Cherie, it's a big responsibility, but they're learning different skills and maybe opportunities for scholarships along the way. Yes, ma'am. So with, you know, earlier we were talking, so with these guys, whether they're new or old, you know, been in the program for a little bit, a lot of this is just me teaching them the basic care of animal science. How do we take care of these animals? How do we care for something other than ourselves? And as they learn, they will learn to take notes, keep records, and eventually that will help lead them into scholarship opportunities as they get through, as they further their career in high school. This is only the beginning. The students will have an incredible year. I'm very excited for them. Reporting for Madison High School, it's Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. How cool was that, Tiffany? Yeah, full of energy, you saw. Gina was feisty. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, we are getting ready for the start of the Olympics out there in Paris. You know Victor Wembanyama's out there. To, for the opening ceremonies that are set to kick off this afternoon, we have got a preview still ahead. Welcome back. A home was blown to bits and a neighborhood shaken. And now people in Floresville are asking who's responsible. Yeah, hard to believe this has been more than a week now where a gas line explosion leveled one home. You remember that video out there and damaged several others. Our John Paul Barajas was at last night's Floresville City Council meeting where the city manager gave, quote, a basic briefing. A house completely obliterated and fire and black smoke and I thought like hey this is something out of a movie you know this is not Floresville but it was real and as of Thursday the city of Floresville is still picking up the pieces after the July 16th gas line explosion one home was left a pile of rubble while the police chief says approximately 13 properties were damaged well, as a citizen we want to know what's being done is there going to be compensation who's responsible and what is the city doing about it the city says a rise broadband crew hidden under ground gas main while installing fiber optic cables triggering an explosion Thursday night more than a week later Floresville City Manager Andy Jocelyn addressed City Council the investigative report and findings are unavailable at this time Jocelyn says the city is communicating with their legal team to ensure they're handling the situation properly he told council members that his office has provided those affected by the explosion with claims adjusters information for Rice Broadband and Rockport contractors. But the main thing that we're waiting on is going to be the report from the Texas Railroad Commission to the uh... It's not clear when that report will be available, but it's only adding to the frustration among people in Floresville, where a different contractor hit a gas line just two days after the July 16th explosion. Luckily, nothing similar occurred. There needs to be money spent to make sure that those lines are located before the drilling happens. And at very least, when you accidentally drill into somebody's line, make sure that there's somebody there to repair it. This really leaves our community in a state of fear and paranoia. Executive session wrapped up just before 8.30 p.m. and on their agenda for behind closed door conversations was taking potential legal action against Rise Broadband, but two city councilwomen told us no decisions have been made up to this point. They also say a halt on all digging in the city of Floresville is still in place and will be for the foreseeable future. In Floresville, John Paul Barajas, KSA 12 News. Yeah, and taking you outside with live cam right now. And we were talking about all those weekend events, Tiffany. We're wondering yeah. if the rain is going to cooperate, how the weather is going to look. Exactly. Yeah, it's not going to be, you know, for everybody. So as we mentioned at the beginning of the newscast, keep your plans. Do not cancel them. But do know that if you are planning on being outside for a little bit, you may have to run inside. If we see a couple of these pockets of heavy rain develop both tomorrow and into Sunday before those rain chances come down into next week, but we are thankful for the rain. Take a look at the aquifer levels. We wrap up the work week this Friday. It's up almost half of a foot at 635.7. Great to see. Also great to see not as large of a list when it comes to today's pollen count. Moles are down from yesterday, but still in the high category. Pigweed is low. Hey, we're going to take a look at how some of our area lakes and reservoirs are doing following this rain right after the break.
Welcome back. I just wanted to report yesterday we were talking about the Southwest mm -hmm. Airlines changes. Mm -hmm. So I talked to the expert, my mom. Oh. And uh, <laughs> she told you get those rapid rewards points. Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, she's coming this weekend. Ah. But she is not happy. But mm. yeah, she just likes to choose her seats. So, so is like, she able like to choose she her seats for this flight? This well, weekend or it's no, not. no, she doesn't. Okay. She, she likes the ability to just go in and, okay. and being it's a different experience. Yes. Yeah, I think that was yeah. um, what made it special for some people. Mm -hmm. And I know there's that's a trending story right now on yes. KSAT.com. No, oh, it totally is. Yeah, a lot of people are very opinionated about what was going on there with Southwest assigned seating. Yeah, and maybe some people are traveling to town yes, here to absolutely. San Antonio yeah. Mia this weekend. So what should they expect? Keep the rain gear just in case, but most of your plans are going to be just fine. Thankful that we have seen a few different rounds of nice rain move across parts of South Central Texas really over the past week, and this has allowed for some improvements to our area lakes, reservoirs, even some of those river stream flows as well. We've got a whole article up on KSAT.com slash whatever the weather detailing this, but let's talk a little bit about it right now, specifically when it comes to Medina Lake. We know this is an area that is one one of the first spots to really see some of the stresses of drought take shape across our region. The watershed over the past eight days has seen anywhere between six to seven inches up there in Bandera County trickling down into Medina Lake. I do want to be clear. We still have a long way to go when it comes to filling this lake back up, but it is up over five and a half feet over the past week, so that's great to see. It's still only 3.6% full, about 88 and a half feet below below the conservation pool. Canyon Lake up about a foot over the past week as well, still only at about 57.3% full. And you can see how some of the other area lakes and reservoirs are doing across Central and South Texas. I wanna talk about rainfall statistics so far for the month of July, almost near the end of July. And we are doing very well thanks to this atypical weather pattern for this time of year that we've seen over the past week or so. The average amount of rain fall for us here in San Antonio. Our climate site is the San Antonio International Airport is 2.41 inches. This month already we've seen over three inches of rain, so we are above the average. That's great news. And of course, compared to July of 2023 last year, we had under just two tenths of an inch. That's it. So it's nice to see that rain gauge fill up just a little bit more so helping with some of the prolonged drought. We're going to talk about that in the next half hour, and we're not finished with the rain chances just yet. A 40% potential this afternoon, generally through about 7 to 8 p.m. Once again into tomorrow, and maybe a slightly better chance on Sunday before those rain chances really shut off into early next week with high pressure taking back over. This is one of the reasons why we've seen these few different rain chances in the forecast this week. This area of low pressure centered over the eastern half of the Lone Star State. That's why the better rain is still focused east of the I-35 corridor today. Some flood alerts, by the way, near the East Texas, Western Louisiana border. Here in South Central Texas, the hill country not really seeing a a lot of activity, same west of I-35 and 281. But again, we do have some pockets of very heavy rain moving across portions of Carnes County, Southern Wilson County, near 181, near Poth, Falls City, Carnes City, even near Campbellton out there in southeastern Atascosa County, picking up on some heavy rain. That's generally going to be the case for anybody that does tap into the activity today. Some pockets of heavy rain, as well as maybe some lightning and thunder, a few gusty winds, certainly possible. A quick inch to even three inches not completely off the table, especially for the coastal plains. We'll keep that 40% chance going maybe closer to the Alamo City by 3, 4, 5 p.m., something we will be monitoring for the evening commute home as a lot of folks get ready to kick off their weekend. And then after the sun goes down, a lot of the leftover activity should start to wind down as well. Again, into your weekend, we're going to start off in the mid 70s, high still in the upper 80s. So that is slightly cooler than average for this time of year. Our average high is in the mid 90s. Keep the rain gear handy. You won't necessarily need to use it for everybody tomorrow and into Sunday. But then as that high pressure system takes back over next week, those rain chances come down and temperatures are more seasonable for this time of year, which just means hot and back in the mid to upper 90s. So we'll detail those changes a little bit more in depth in the next half hour. Also, maybe talk about some Saharan dust that could head our direction next week.
Thank you, Mia. All right, always good to see, especially our lakes and rivers getting some much needed rain there. All right, the Olympics, by the way, this is starting up, y'all, and this year's medals will be extra special. They will all include a piece of French history. We'll explain coming up after the break. Welcome back. The Paris Olympics are getting off to a rougher than hoped for start today with suspected acts of sabotage targeting France's flagship high-speed rail network ahead of opening ceremonies. Now, authorities were scrambling to deal with this widespread rail disruptions caused by what they described as coordinated overnight sabotage of those high-speed trail lines, or train lines, excuse me. The coordinated sabotage took place in a series of pre-dawn attacks that caused chaos on the country's busiest rail lines and heightened security concerns. The state-owned railway operator said vandals had damaged signal boxes along the lines connecting Paris with other cities. All right, yes, not a great start there, but of course the opening ceremony is set to kick off in just a little bit. I know a lot of people are excited about this. A lot of top, uh, top athletes from around the world competing for that gold medal. ABC's Melissa Don has the latest on the buzz surrounding the games. Paris on high alert ahead of the Summer Olympics. Tight security with record number of law enforcement and security forces up to 75,000 patrolling the streets of the French capital throughout the Olympic Games. France calling it the largest peacetime deployment in the nation's history. This as Paris Tourism Board expects about 11 million tourists to visit. The hype surrounding the opening ceremony taking place along the River Seine, where surprise performances are expected. <laughs> Celine Dion is in town. Many speculating she'll have a comeback performance. She's here along with other stars like Lady Gaga. Carrying the U.S. flag for Team USA, three-time Olympian LeBron James, and women's flag bearer, reigning U.S. Open champion and star tennis player Coco Gauff. I wanted to cry when I found out, but my whole team was there, so I like went in the corner and like did it. <laughs> but like it was just like I wasn't. I truly am in shock, and I, I don't take it for granted. While the men's USA basketball team gears up and is favored to go for gold, they're also celebrating the excitement of seeing world-renowned athletes in action. You get juiced up watching other athletes compete at a high level, and I think that's contagious. Uh, you don't want to just sit in your hotel room and watch it on TV, so. I uh, plan on uh, finding the appropriate times to get out there and be a fan as well. Seven-time Olympic gold medalist swimmer Katie Ledecky is looking to add to her gold tally in Paris. It's obviously a, a great field, top to bottom, lots of people that have a chance, so um, I'm just going to put up a great race. French officials plan to have more than 35,000 police officers deployed each day for the Olympics. France has called in for backup from more than 40 countries to help keep the city safe throughout the games. Melissa Don, ABC News, Los Angeles. All right, a lot of people going for the gold here. Winners at the 2024 Summer Olympic Games in Paris will bring home a piece of history. Each medal features a piece of the Eiffel Tower's original iron structure. Following wow. renovation work, parts of the tower were removed and preserved. Now those pieces are now part of the medal's centerpiece. That is super cool. Absolutely love that. And yes, with the Olympics starting, we were talking a little bit, a little bit earlier. What's your favorite Olympic sport? Oh, swimming, <laughs> archery. Yes. And I have a great story coming up on Monday, so you don't want to miss we're that. We're talking about that as well. Yeah, I like those sort of weird sports. I know that there's like <laughs> fencing and like badminton. Oh, that's not weird. That's not super weird, but like <laughs> the obscure, obscure ones mostly. Yeah, we yes. love them all. Equestrian. Let's get that. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, we're really excited about the Olympics to get started and um, obviously taking place there in Paris. Yeah, we have lots more to come. We'll be right back. All right, we're still having a good time talking about fencing and all that. <laughs> <laughs> Not non-weird sports, okay? <laughs> um, but obviously a lot of different things are going to be taking place across the cities. We take a look at live cam. Mia, how are things looking out there? Hey, well, here's the other good thing about, yes, at least some rainfall in the area, along with some added cloud cover, some of those saturated grounds. Temperatures not nearly as hot as where we know they can be for this time of year. Take a look at current conditions outside. We're just in the low 80s right now.
right now here in San Antonio. That's it. Feels a few degrees warmer, of course, when you factor in the humidity, but all things considered, Again, not as bad as it could be. 90 degrees, though, already out west in Del Rio. 82 in Bernie. 84 the current temperature up in the hill country in Kerrville. Now, here in the Alamo City, we'll keep that 40% chance going through sunset to find a few spotty downpours here and there. High temperature topping off in the upper 80s right near that 90 degree mark. And then if you're headed out for any Friday evening plans, again, rain chances will start to come down, especially after the sun goes down. And then those thermometers will start to fall into the low 80s and eventually end to the upper 70s later on tonight. Here's a look at your forecast high temperatures across the San Antonio metro area later on this afternoon. Again, right near 90 for the most part in Bear County. I do think a few low 90s will be possible, especially the farther west that you go, where those rain chances are not necessarily as high throughout the remainder of the afternoon. If you don't find rain today, we have a few more opportunities over the next 48 hours, Saturday and into Sunday. The notice after that, Rain chances come down and we return to more of a typical summertime pattern for the last few days of July and early August. So we'll get you another look at that. Plus, of course, that drought monitor update if you missed it yesterday coming up a little bit later on. Thank you, Mia. Now a closely watched inflation gauge is inching closer to the Federal Reserve's 2% target. The personal consumption expenditures price index slowed to 2.5% for the 12 months that ended in June. That's what economists had been projecting. On a monthly basis, the price index increased by 0.1%, which also landed in line with expectations. Falling energy prices and goods prices continued to put a damper on overall inflation in June. Meanwhile, food and services inflation saw a slight increase. The data is fueling optimism that a rate cu cut could be announced at the Fed's next meeting. All right, and unfortunately, we're seeing this trend continue. First time home buyers continue to face affordability issues. A new report from Zillow found that a typical starter home is now worth $1 million or more in 237 cities. And that is up from 84 cities in 2019. So Zillow defines a starter home as a home in the lowest third of home values in a given region. California, New York, and New Jersey have the highest number of cities with entry level homes worth an average of a million dollars. But half of all U.S. states also have at least one such city. Part of the problem is supply and demand. There is a shortage of homes for sale compared to demand, which has driven those prices up. A new study suggests double mastectomies do not improve survival rates for breast cancer patients. Now, researchers found there's no survival advantage in having both breasts removed when cancer is detected in one. Most patients who kept their other breast had the same survival rate as those who had double mastectomies. Now, women who had single mastectomies fared well, facing just a roughly 7% chance of seeing cancer in the other breast over 20 years. The development of cancer in the other breast increased the risk of death fourfold. Now, women who had double mastectomies also rarely saw cancer later in the small amount of remaining breast tissue when they did. They too saw a fourfold increase in mortality risk. A raging inferno. You see this video behind me here still wreaking havoc on Northern California. And now we are learning that this fiery scene could have been completely avoidable. ABC's Andrea Fuji reports the massive flames started spreading after police say that a suspect actually pushed his burning car over an embankment. An arrest as a massive wildfire rips across part of Northern California. Arcana Whitworth is there. We're standing in the only road in and out of Cohasset right now, and we're getting covered with smoke and ash. We have to get in the car. This is dangerous. The park fire near Chico exploding in size on Thursday, burning more than 125,000 acres in just 24 hours. The violent blaze devouring homes, bursting gas tanks, and sending towering flames hundreds of feet into the air. The fire building so much momentum that a fire NATO formed in the fire zone. Now parts of the town of Paradise are under evacuation warnings, a terrifying reminder for many people in the area. I'm completely surrounded right now, so I'm going to... I'm actually going to bone out of here and see if I can get ahead of this thing because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end up getting caught. Paradise saw the worst wildfire in California history in 2018, which killed 85 people. Firefighters are now worried that history could repeat itself. If the fire blows over, 
I can't make any promise or guarantee that we can get up there to save your life. And you may be in a position where uh, you can't survive, and we've seen that happen here. Authorities say the man responsible for starting the fire is behind bars. The suspect, 42-year-old Ronnie Stout, a two-time felon who was allegedly seen pushing a flaming car into a gulch on Wednesday afternoon. And the Park Fire is just one of dozens of wildfires burning on the West Coast right now. Thousands of firefighters are already spread across Oregon and Idaho, where 38 separate fires have burned nearly a million acres. Andrea Fuji, ABC News, New York. Well, football season is getting closer, and we are now hearing from your Dallas Cowboys as training camp gets underway. We'll look at the day one headlines from camp out there in California. That's coming up in just a bit. A look outside with live cam, 81 degrees. Happy Friday, but we are also taking a look at the Saharan dust that could be coming our way, Ooh. right, Mia? Into next week. So right now, just looking outside with live cam, you know, we still have plenty of blue out there in the sky. There is a little bit of light Saharan dust pushing across southern and eastern Texas right now. No notable issues when it comes to air quality expected here in San Antonio today or over the next couple of days. But where we'll need to monitor potentially for a few impacts could come by next week, specifically by Wednesday. So the middle and later portions of next week, it's looking like we could see a slightly thicker plume of some Saharan dust work in from the south. Of course, adding a haze to the sky, maybe also some colorful sunrises and sunsets along with more heat on the way. Another check of that forecast plus authority radar after the break. Welcome back. And uh, Tiffany, do you have any plans for the weekend? I know your mom says yes. coming into town. Yes. yes. So cafecito all day, Ooh, every day. There we go. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it's going to be yeah. a nice weekend, maybe mm -hmm. some possible showers here and there. But overall, it's going to be nice, Mia, right? And we are so thankful for the rain. Yes. We will take any rain that we can get at this point, right? And thankfully, because of the rain that we've already seen across portions of South Central Texas, specifically in the Hill Country and west of I-35, we have seen some improvements to the drought monitor. In case you missed it yesterday, I want to talk about some of those improvements that we've seen. This is the drought monitor that came out last week. So last Thursday, you can see those two pockets of red, one in the hill country just south of Kerrville, another out west near the Rio Grande. I'm going to fade on the new drought monitor. Ready? Three, two, one. Maybe there we go there. There's that new drought monitor and you can see that that pocket of red that was out west near the Rio Grande has disappeared. It's still severe drought, but trending in the right direction with some of that drought also being taken out of the southern Edwards Plateau, specifically northern Edwards County and even northern Real County. But we still do have some work to do. There is another pocket of extreme drought still in place near Bernie, even stretching down to the Medina Lake area. But here's the thing. The data every week for the drought monitor cuts off at 7 a.m. Tuesday. And of course, we did see plenty of rain fall after that threshold, that time threshold. Take a look at some of these totals that fell after 7 a.m. Tuesday. So almost three and a half inches in Medina. That will likely help with potentially some more improvements when the new update comes out this upcoming Thursday. Over six tenths of an inch here in the Alamo City, about an inch and three quarters in Floresville, over an inch in Hallettsville. And by the way, that total is going to increase because Lavaca County is seeing some rain right now with the potential to see a little bit more into the upcoming weekend. So we talked about how some of our area rivers, lakes and reservoirs are benefiting from this rain. Also the Edwards Aquifer. It is up over six feet since July 18th. So the past eight days, we've really started to see those levels rise, which is also great to see because of the rain as well. I do want to mention, so we were talking about earlier in the newscast, we have those spotty downpours pushing across the coastal plains. We did get word in that there's some minor street flooding in Lavaca County. You can see north of Hallettsville, anywhere where you're seeing a little bit of yellow, that's a 
minimum of two inches of rain that have fallen with some of this activity. So almost three inches just to the north of the Hallettsville area has fallen in the past 12 hours, about four tenths of an inch near Carn City, far southwestern Wilson County, almost three inches there southwest of Poth. So that's great to see, but do know with some of these heavy downpours and already saturated areas, some more minor flooding cannot completely be ruled out. And we have some of that ongoing right now in between Poth and Fall City, right along 181 Campbellton, a little bit of heavy rain near your area as well. And that continues near Gonzales as well as the Molten area. So this is going to continue to work in from the south closer to the I-10 corridor over the next couple of hours. By the way, we've also started to see a few isolated pop up showers near Concan over there in northern Uvalde County. Great for the Frio River. They will also take any rain that they can get. So into this afternoon and through sunset, we'll keep that 40% chance going for a few more spotty downpours to an isolated thunderstorm to develop. Again, better chances really are going to reside east of the I-35 corridor, but still some more pockets of heavy rain will certainly be possible before the sun goes down. And then after that, more of the same tomorrow and into Sunday before those rain chances come down into next week. And here are those weather changes. That low pressure system moves farther off to the southwest and then that heat high the big blue H works back into the state of Texas, which means a drier trend works in for next week and those temperatures are back in the 90s. Thankfully, we're not there right now, though here in San Antonio, 84 degrees as of the latest update 91 now in Del Rio 90 over in Eagle Pass. Of course, it will be a little bit hotter for our friends across our southwestern counties and near the Rio Grande this afternoon. 89 the forecast high temperature here in town and then if you are heading out for any Friday evening plans mid 80s expected for the most part before we fall into the mid 70s to kick off our Saturday morning still slightly cooler than average Saturday into Sunday in terms of those high temperatures fingers crossed for a little bit more rain because then we'll be trending drier and hotter into next week we'll be right back All right, that right there, get me pumped, ready to go. How about them Dallas Cowboys? Training camp is now officially underway for the boys out there in California. As we take a look at Dak Prescott behind me, this is also where we find our Mary Rominger covering the team out there in Cali. Here's Mary's day one recap. Contracts have been the talk of the Dallas Cowboys offseason. And when quarterback Dak Prescott walked off of the practice field and spoke with the media after the team's first training camp practice, he was consistent in sharing his mentality amidst the current circumstances on the business side involving him and Micah Parsons, who were in contract years, and of course, C.D. Lamb holding out. They're paying me well for this season, so uh, to, to, to get paid, the to play this game is, is great. I have an obligation to the NFL, to the other quarterbacks and to my teammates when it comes to, to what I get paid, what I accept, and that's where sometimes, you know, I leave it to, to, to my agents. I just love this game, and, and I, as I told you, I'm obsessed over getting better and improving, being out there with the guys. Um, so, so that's always my focus, but trust me, I understand other guys. You gotta think, I also don't get touched at practice. Some of these other guys don't. I mean, you know, a guy like CD, he comes out here, there's a lot, lot more risk for him than it is for me. I understand every part of the business and everybody's perspective or, or their route that they take, but for me, um, the best way for me to get better is being out here with my guys. Now that's the perspective you want from your quarterback and leader. As the outside noise gets louder, Prescott is staying level headed through it all. Now Larry and I will have your coverage from day two of Cowboys training camp all evening at five, six and ten. So be sure to stay locked in right here on KSAT 12. Back to you guys. All right, thank you, Mary. Yes, Jerry Jones also talked for like 50 minutes. Love that guy, Jerry. All right, with all the talk about the Houston Texans, we're talking about their high-powered offense. We sometimes forget about how good that defense can actually be. The Texans drafted cornerback Kamari Lasseter out of the University of Georgia, who goes by, get this, the nickname, The Locksmith. I love that nickname right there because he locks down those offensive players. And Lasseter shared with us what he's been focusing on during his first NFL training camp. First thing you want to do as a young player, as a rookie, uh, coming into a new organization, new new atmosphere, new everything, you want to be able to prove to your, you want to earn the respect of your teammates and your coaches. And uh, I feel like, you know, that's something that I really focused on and I'm still focusing on. Like, I want to earn the respect of everyone in the building before it's time to play. So just, you know, by the way I come in every day and um, I just want to be a student of the game. The locksmith and the rest of the Texans will get back to training camp today and the rest of the weekend.
Here we go. Summer hoops camps are still going on around town. And the Mustang, talking about a nickname there, Keldon Johnson held one this week on the far northwest side of town. KJ held his basketball camp over at Cornerstone High School along with his older brother, Caleb Johnson. The camp is going to spend over two days, and KJ showed off some of those skills to the kiddos and talked to us about this camp. I think it's an amazing experience for me, but also for the kids. You know, I get to share a camp with my big brother, someone I looked up to my whole life. So being able to come out here and have a camp and be able to get back to the community of San Antonio, San Antonio is big for me. All right, and we all know that Wemby is about to compete in the Olympics for Team France. And we asked Keldon, who, by the way, won a gold medal in, during the last Olympics, who he's rooting for. Definitely hope that, you know, Victor does well. Um, you know, I hope France does well, but also, you know, I want to see US, USA get the gold. Um, you know, it's my, my, my home country, uh, but, you know, I, I, wish, I wish France all the best, um, but, you know, I got to go for USA. Okay, so he's a little torn there, though. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Wimby all the way, obviously, right? Yes, we love Wimby. I hope France as well, but obviously Team USA is still the favorite yes. to win that one. Yes. Now, SA Live is taking us on a road trip to Austin today. Yes, this is a gold medal winning team right here. If you didn't see their weekend getaway show, you're going to want to see all the places that they went over at the Texas Capitol. Here's a sneak peek. Looking for a weekend getaway this summer? Today on SA Live, how you can relax, eat, and save money because we're giving you a great deal on a hotel in Austin. And it's a scenic adventure on the Colorado River where you can kayak, canoe, or stand up paddleboard just a heartbeat away from downtown Austin. All right, still somewhat quiet here in San Antonio, but we're starting to see a few isolated pop up showers develop west of our area near the hill country near Bandera, even a nice little downpour just west of Concan out there in Uvalde County. And of course, the better activity, more scattered activity is east of Highway 281 south of I-10, just to the east of Floresville near Stockdale near Gonzales and now out of northern Lavaca County where we still have some of that heavy rain in place. 40% chance continues through sunset today. More of the same tomorrow and into Sunday. Then after that, those rain chances are really going to start to come down into early next week. Notice more sunshine returning and as a result, those temperatures will crank back up mid to even some upper 90s possible by this time next week. Thank you, Mia. And don't forget to join Mia. She'll be here tomorrow morning. Yes. All right. SA Live starts right now up there in Austin. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> Looking for a weekend getaway this summer? Today on SA Live, I can relax, 